So to get started with the cleanup module of SKN, it's very, very simple. You simply hit play. Now people will immediately have asked me, well, when do I run SKN cleanup? I really think you should run it in one of two sort of places in your workflow. Either initially you open the shot in Photoshop and you hit play and you go for it. It does whatever it's going to do and you modify what you need to modify and then continue with your edit. Or if you really want, for example, in this case here, there's various moles on her, which I like. I think I like it on this look and I'm not going to edit them out, but it's a very fast heal, obviously, that you can do and you can knock those out if you wanted to. SKN will reduce those, but it will not remove them. Okay. Any other little minor details that are involved with like removals or rebuilds or anything huge, you want to do that first, in my opinion, or you can let SKN reduce issues on the skin and inconsistencies and strange patterns and, and weird warbling of, you know, luminosity. Sometimes it happens right under the skin. It'll smooth all that out. And then you can do a polish manually if you want a little bit of healing, even above that layer. So with that said, I like to run it right out of the gate on cleanup, thinking to myself, I need efficiency. So let's see what we do. So I'm going to hit the big giant play button. Now, SKN will process a lot of stuff up front, but it'll also let you reprocess certain settings. So the layers that you get, the end result of the layer stack, it's not just a bunch of static layers that you can change the opacity of. These are active layers that you can change things on. It's always going to take a few seconds, depending on your you know, 8-bit versus 16-bit. How much megapixels are we talking about? 60 megapixels could take 30, 40 seconds to process. But once it's done, then every other reprocess will be very, very fast. And some things are instant. Let's take a look at what we have. So turn that whole layer stack off and on, off and on. Now, first workflow thing that I always tell everyone is check your mask. Now, you can do that manually by holding Option or Alt and clicking the mask. Or you can go back to the cleanup main, excuse me, the SKN main panel, as opposed to bottom right button here for the advanced. We go to the main panel. We have the mask button down here. We can click that and look. Always a good idea to check your mask because a good skin mask, whether you're using this panel or not, is integral to a good skin edit. First for cleanup, then for toning, maybe even creative grading. A good mask makes all the difference. Now, if you're just going to do a quick cleanup, most things that don't look completely accurate usually don't matter. For example, on her hair here, there's some hair involved, as you can see. That will not make a significant difference in the final edit. But if you want to be thorough while you're in the mask view, you can paint with black and quickly mask out any hair. Now, keep in mind, too, her dark hair is very cooperative when it comes to automatic skin tone masking because it's not usually in the same range. So it gets, you know, it gets skipped over pretty well by Photoshop's brain. Now, SKN does use our chroma data method to select skin tone. So it's much more accurate, as you can see. It almost looks like a like a pen tool selection, really. OK, and these little details on the jeans probably won't matter. That's actually a piece of skin down here. Come think of it. OK, so back on to normal. You can also, of course, mask out and clean up your mask, excuse me, in this view as well. So I'm going to go ahead and remove her lips because if I do any type of skin tone balancing, color balancing, I want to make sure that I don't change the lip tone too much. And then I can adjust other things as I go. But let's take a look at what we have done. Let's go into the shoulder real quick. And we go off and on. The default setting that SKN gives you on cleanup is very subtle. Generally speaking, it's a great either initial polish or a nice light edit. And it's basically done. As long as your mask is clean and you're happy with it, it's basically done. But Let's go into our settings here and take a look at what we can do. First and foremost, the very top, we have overall opacity. That's literally the opacity of the entire layer stack of all the different edits that's, that are happening in cleanup. Why that's important? You might think, well, I can just change every setting below it manually. Well, sure. But more often than not, you're going to find yourself in a situation where you like everything, but it's all too strong. Oh, man. Well, you don't have to change five or six settings manually. You can just change the overall opacity and take back some of that look. Very powerful function, actually, when you decide I like, you know, sort of the texture manipulation that I've done, but it's all a little strong. It looks a little fake, maybe. Take down the overall opacity. Very powerful. We'll get to that. It's on top because it's, of course, the general setting, but we'll get to that as we work. Smoothing amount, that is opacity, and that has everything to do with the buttons on the bottom. This is the smoothing function. And when we go to smoothing intensity, 
These settings are not opacity. This is reprocessing the smoothing function or the blurring operator. Okay. So if I were to choose another one right now, let's go for the lesser smoothing one. We tap it. It's going to think a little bit and reprocess that layer. So now it has a slightly different feel. It's not just opacity. If I go to the maximum one, it's going to reprocess that. And you see, again, we have a slightly different feel. Now, the thing about this smoothing intensity is that it's not necessarily more is more and less is less. You want to find the intensity, which is based on the blurring operator's radius and threshold. Um, you want to find the intensity that's going to work best for the resolution of your image. That is the pixel dimensions. Okay. And the look you're going for. So it's not necessarily the right button is smoother and the left button is not as smooth. You'll play with it and you'll get that idea in your mind. You'll feel it out and go, oh, I think I know what it's doing. I'm going to put it back on the average in the middle. And next up, we have secondary smoothing. This is a last resort, if you will, when you really want to smooth something out and it's causing you fits and you can't seem to do it any other way. So you pull secondary smoothing up and it does create a stronger pretty strong, intense blur. As you can see, if you put it all the way, you can see what happens. It goes overkill. The only reason we even let it go that far is in case you have a specific fix that you want to do, which is for another video. We have that in other videos, but let's say we put a little bit like 8%. Okay. Now let's see about the next section, which is texture recovery radius. This is really exciting because here again, we're going to reprocess data. This is not just a texture that's been extracted, which it has been, but it's not just opacity. Okay. I can choose how much texture I want to recover. Now the slider below it is the opacity of it. So I'm going to turn it up real quick. As you can see, a lot of texture has been recovered. I'm going to turn it a whole lot, a little too much right now. Okay. This is the average, the middle one. I'm going to recover more texture, the far right button reprocesses. And now we have a wider radius and we have a different type of broader texture. Okay. This is a frequency separation type of process and it's actively done. Okay. We're not just changing opacity. If I go to a tighter radius, reprocesses and I get a tighter radius. I can get a really tight radius with this one. As you can see, turn that up to maximum. All right. You can see how tight that is. We'll go to the next one, which is a little broader, a little broader. And then I go back to the middle average one. As you can see, we're, we're doing texture management is what I call it. So let's say we choose a second one and we put it sort of in the middle something like that. We're going to take down the secondary smoothing a little bit. And now let's refine that, right? Okay. So we have the texture recovery amount, which is how much texture we want to bring back. Generally speaking, you want a little higher for the smaller radii and lower for the larger radii. It depends on the look that you want. Okay. Contrast and luminosity, pretty straightforward. So adding contrast, we always add a little default contrast of 15. Your presets can override that, but we always do because the blurring process tends to reduce contrast. Bring it back up by 15 and you usually get a pretty even result, at least for a default setting. But we can turn that up. Okay. As you can see, we can turn it down. We can turn it up and just kind of get that contrast. Overall, brightening and darkening, this should be used as corrective. Even though when you darken, it feels like, oh, I can darken her skin tone or I can lighten her skin tone. It should be used lightly for corrective purposes. I don't recommend that you try to do any toning here, especially since SKN has an entire toning function, which is far more powerful. Okay. Not to mention that when I darken, I do see that my mask isn't quite right right here. That's okay though, because here again, while you're working with any type of skin tone mask, it's a good idea to keep the mask edited as needed, no matter what you're doing, whether you're using skin or otherwise, it's a good idea to have it masked out. There we go. That's a little bit cleaner. I like that. So I don't want luminosity change. So what I do is I double click the word luminosity, the title, and it goes back to default. All these settings are that way. I can double click them. They go back to default. Contrast goes back to default. Okay. Now the hue balance again, below this one, this is the corrective hue balance. Okay. So if I were to increase the uh, opacity here, then what happens is the skin tone becomes one average hue. What happens is that SKN will, you know, mask out the skin, calculate an average hue, and then have that at the ready. And if I were to max it out at 100%, it makes all of the skin one average hue that it found when it analyzed the skin. Okay. And that's in the layer stack as well. So you can do that if you want, max it out to 100%, just like Capture One can do. And now all the skin tone is one hue. 
which is a little bit fake looking, but the option is there. Really, really great when you have red fingers or red ears or some a red sunburn. <clears throat> can't change the luminosity of the sunburn. That's a whole different type of thing, but we can't change the hues and that really, really helps. Generally speaking, if you do increase the hue balance and you like it, but it's too red or too yellow because it finds an average and that average can be more red or more yellow, regardless of nationality or the type of skin we have, you're always going to find an average somewhere between red and yellow. So you can adjust that. So you can make it pinker. You can make it more yellow Then double click, leave it alone. Usually just like capture one, if you're familiar, you know what I'm talking about. You can come in and choose like a hue balance of like maybe 40. And then in this case, I want her a little more yellow. So I'm going to move to the right just a bit from that to that. Let's kind of see what we got. Okay. From that to that, you can see we have kind of a soft texture um, and a little bit of underlying things in the skin. And now we've kind of polished it up. Is that the look you should go for? No, it's a look and a look that I like. I'm going to zoom in a little more here and I'm going to turn down the texture recovery just a little bit less. Okay. I think that looks all right from that to that very polished look. Another thing you can do too, of course, is just take the texture recovery all the way to zero because what SKN does initially, it does not destroy all the texture. Okay. It does a cool method to kind of polish things up, but it keeps a little bit of texture. So if you take the texture recovery all the way down, you might get the smoothing that you're after without actually recovering any more texture. If you really, really want, you can take the smallest radius and pop it up just a little bit to give a little bit of sort of kind of a micro tonal contrast to the skin. Okay. If you really want that, if you want like a heavy polish, always zoom out, look at the situation and see, does this look fake or not? A lot of times contrast will help when the blurring looks a little strong from that to that. Okay. Very, very clean look. And now because of the hue balancing, you may want to look at the makeup situation and go, well, I don't necessarily want the eye makeup to be the same tone as everything else. I want to bring back some of the pink tones that were there because I like it or whatever. They could be blush as well that you can reduce. Some knowledge of manual masking is important, no matter what you're doing on a skin edit, no matter what plugin you're using, there's always a good idea to get your mask under control. So you get the results that you want. And the more you work on this mask, let me go back to the main one and click mask. The more you work on this mask, the better you'll be when you move on to like the toning functions of SKN. Okay. So it's a good idea to get this mask in order while you're getting your skin clean up. Now it looks a little bit yellow and go back to the master and actually go back. There you go. Make the hue go back left just a little bit. Now, in regards to the mask, keep in mind too, that if you're using an image that has, um, you know, let's say it has a huge color cast on it or it's black and white, it's monochrome, that the skin tone function, even with MVP's chroma data that we use, still utilizes Photoshop skin tone sort of color range selector and it can get lost on skin tone if it does you're going to have to manually clean up your mask this is normal like, across many many different types of plugins and functions and actions it's pretty common this is one of the reasons why i suggest that we run skn cleanup out of the gate you've done your color correction in raw presumably everything is even and balanced as best as it can and it gives skn that is Photoshop, the best possibility of getting your mask as clean as possible and everything clean up front, right? Whether it's the texture or whatever you want to do, get it clean up front. If you do a lot of heavy grading and then run cleanup, it could get really lost on what it is it's trying to select and what it's trying to change. It's really, really good to run cleanup initially or after a little basic healing. Now, with that said, if you really want, while you're working here, you can make a new layer on top of SKN's folder stack. And you can go, for example, to the spot healing and click the option here, sample all layers. And if you really want, you can remove moles right on top of SKN's work. Okay. If you really wanted to, I don't recommend this necessarily, but you can, because now if you're pretty convinced that you like the skin look that you got with SKN and you remove all these moles on top, Okay. Let's just take a couple of small things as well. Okay. There we go. If you really like that, when you come back to SKN and go to the settings, as long as you don't make radical changes, those edits on top will be seamless, right? So if you were to darken heavily, you'll see your heels, right? But don't, don't worry about that. If you got it pretty close and you're like, ah, oh, let me polish up, see what it looks like without moles. Cool. I like that. All right. So now we went from this to this all with cleanup and you can get more or less texture 
uh, on the fly as you're working. All right, so that's kind of the basic overview of cleanup. Keep in mind, if you do like this, go back to the main page, you can add a preset. Okay, so you can hit the plus button here and call it like, um, let's call it medium cleanup. Okay, and we'll say save. There we go. Now we have medium cleanup. And of course, that can be, you know, redone any old time. I'm going to delete all these layers. Click on medium cleanup. Now it's selected. And then I hit play. And it's going to run through the same process to set up all its work layers. But then it'll give me the settings that I chose. Any second now you'll see. And what's great about that, of course, is that all the shots in the same set, I can just apply the same preset. And I can just keep rolling, get the look that I want. So that's cleanup in a nutshell. Little minor details are available in other videos as well. But any questions, leave a comment below. We know there's a lot to this and we're always happy to answer. The hallmark of SKN is you can actively change things on the layer stack instead of opening up a third party UI, committing to everything you get, and then all you get is opacity after that. Nope, we wanted flexibility. That was the premise from the beginning. And I think we succeeded on that. So again, any questions, leave a comment below.